it out the grease, it made it a geezer Poppin' on the weed, man, I've been under it Never said it's easy, it was never easy Made it out the grease Diamonds hit like water lately, yeah, yeah Shawty used to try to play me, yeah, yeah Now I pull up in that new Mercedes Go get that shit! <laughs> <laughs> Go get it! Mm -hmm. Pull up with the tool, I leave it up on the dresser. Right. I'ma hit you with this 30 round compressor. And nice. if I pull up on your girl, you know I'm trying to impress her. Nice. Hey, take her home and then undress her. Wait a minute. Nice. Get in that shit, I'm in my bag. Get in that shit, give a fuck by the pants. Give in that shit, I'ma pass that grass. Give in that shit, I'ma pass that class. Wait a minute, hey. wait a minute. And you know I got it up in my pocket. That's a pocket rocket. I'ma click it twice and then I just shot it like, damn. Bowen is still with a 4 4 0 and we're feeling so cold, damn. No boy fall until they get him out the slammer. I be sipping on as long as the day is a temper. Money make her wet, but I make her a little dipper. Double threat, Lauren still, so I stamped her. My old girl was trifling as I had the banner. Her new man is not gonna say I'm not with banter. Banana clips on their yards and extend those on their hammers. I fold them like eat laundry, then I put them in a hammer. Hey. You and your nigga getting money, this your anthem. Hey. <laughs> This your anthem. Hey. I'ma run it up until I get them in my bands up. Hey. Oh, look. Now she riding with her hands up. Hey. <laughs> Let them know. Shout out my girl Janessa. Let them know. Gang, you know what the fuck going on, man? Big 440. <laughs> What's up, gang? It's your boy Speed, 440 Kicks, back with episode three of the Kickback. I'm in Chambersburg, PA right now with my boy Bo, owner and CEO of Stoic Investments. And today we're going to talk a little bit about his chat and what got him into the stock market, as well as just give y'all some inspiration to get on your own grind and go out there and get your bread up. So, Bo, introduce yourself. Let the people know what, what you're out here doing. I got you. Thank you for having me. Of course. My name is Boaz Poe. I'm from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. So, I just recently graduated from Temple University. Right now, I'm working on Stoic Investments. It's an investment education company that works with the everyday trader and all of us. We try to make it as simple as possible, send out daily alerts, and set up a uh, mentorship program where we can teach you everything that we know. That's awesome. So I've been tapped in with Bo now and I just joined his group. I'm looking to make my first couple trades here and I'm super excited in his group because there's a lot of investment advice groups out there. I'm sure you guys have all seen people trying to push, oh, look at how much money I made here. Look at how much money I made there. Join my group. Let me help you. But they're really out to just get that money from you with their membership and they, they're going to make their money on their plays and you might make a couple bucks with them. But do they really care about your advancement of the knowledge of the stock market? But what I fuck with Bo so much in his group is that they have a fully loaded discord that is aimed at really delivering that knowledge to you. So Bo doesn't just want you to pay for a membership and see his call outs and, and make yourself a couple bucks. He really wants you to take those call outs and learn what, what you're doing with the market, how the market works. And then with his diamond program, which we'll get all into essentially how to, how to find those calls yourself and really be able to guide your own ship. So before we get into all of that, I'd like to ask you, Bo, what was your motivation, your inspiration, your drive for getting into the stock market? And what was like your passion with it? Yeah. So my motivation for the stock market in specific um, came up when I was about uh, 17, 18 years old. Okay. That's when, you know, the whole Robin Hood craze was coming out. So at that point, I was just buying and selling stocks. I would buy a stock, sit, wait for like three or four months. And then, you know, see what happens. I'll check it every so often. I'll be up like four or five dollars and think I was, you know, <laughs> right, some, right. some big dude, Warren Buffett. But um, <laughs> it really didn't hit me until the COVID pandemic, where I remember I bought some shares of Apple and I posted one day, just like I said, I was up like 5%. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm the man, like I'm the fucking best, you know, investor <laughs> ever. Right. And my buddy posted some stuff and he had returns on Apple that were over 150% in a day. Damn. So I'm looking at my phone, I'm looking at my story like, Hold on, like we don't got the same Apple shares because my stuff's only up five percent. And um, so he hit me. We started talking a little more about options. And you know, luckily during that pandemic with football, we were at practice for two hours, and then you were right back in your dorm. Couldn't leave. You couldn't have anybody over. You couldn't go anywhere. So I just went full bore with it, probably like 15, 16 hours a day. Got really heavy into it. Started trading options, and um, eventually it turned into a couple guys reaching out, like, "Hey, you know, I uh, I'll pay you to teach me this." And the rest is kind of history at this point. That's awesome. So what got into what got you into it essentially was seeing your dude with 150% up, like seeing yes. the money and the opportunity in that. And you really just took that and said, 
I got this time. I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome because I think like there's opportunity, as I've said in these other shows everywhere. And it's up to you guys to really take that and run with it, to sit down and try to learn it because there's money everywhere, whether it's reselling shoes, whether it's selling stocks and buying stocks and trading options, whether it's buying and selling bakery, like what, whatever it is, there's opportunity out there to make money a million different ways. And it's all mm -hmm. on you to go out there and get that shit. You're the only person holding yourself back from your full potential. And I really love to hear that Bo went out and got it because once we talk a little more and you'll see where he's at now, it's like he really grew that shit just like I did with the shoes from being adamant and consistent with it every day. So at what point, I know your buddies were then hitting you up. They wanted to pay you. But at what point did you really like, okay, I got to turn this into like a business model. Like I'm going to set up a discord and get this shit rolling. Like how long after your first couple of boys ask you to start sending them plays, were you like really turning that into a discord, into a business? Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually the crazy part about it. Um, we talked a little bit, you know, where my original plan was after I graduated in the fall, I was going to go back for my master's next fall. So um, I'd already been accepted for the master's program. I was working with some buddies. We had a discord and it was about four or five people, you know, I thought that'd be the max. Maybe we'd have 10 people at the end of the year. Um, but you know, things just started picking up and it honestly, you know, I'm sitting here acting like I had the whole business plan myself. It kind of just picked up for me to where more and more people started reaching out like, Hey, I'm seeing what you're doing. Let's work. And, um, you know, luckily I had some people in my corner that started their own businesses before. So they're like, Hey, listen, you're starting to get some people in here. You need this, this, and this, you need to make sure that, you know, you got your back covered and people start losing money. So, um, they really helped me set up to start to scale. And eventually by March, I had come to the realization like, hey, I might not have to go back for my master's. Like this thing's really picking up. And that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And being able to take that and run with it and then ultimately leave your schooling, leave yeah. your plan, because that's what I did. I dropped out of school because I I'm looking to open a shoe store soon. Like I, I believe in myself and you believe in yourself to mm -hmm. where it's like I'm going to burn that bridge of school to really elevate my business and to get that shit going. Right. So in retrospect, from where you started, talk about where your group is at now, your, your mm -hmm. amount of members, your diamond members, like like lay us through your your stoic group right now. Yeah, yeah, so the stoic group at this point, we're pushing, we're a little over 500 members, which is crazy, I never expected that. Um, you know, we're always looking to scale, looking to grow more, trying to figure out some new ways to uh, bring some people in just because, you know, the main point of this, like I said, is to teach, you know, to make trading accessible to every single person, regardless of your background. Um, but right now, like I said, we're pushing over about 500 members. Just started my first diamond mentorship, you know, where that's one-on-one. -on -one. I'm working with you. I'm taking you through a 14 course series where you're learning everything about the market from the backbone, how it starts, what's the difference between publicly traded and privately owned companies. You know, what's the federal reserve, how do interest rates affect the market? Um, and then we're going the whole way through options contracts, how they move my strategies. So that first group we're pushing, I think it's 18 to be exact, right around 20 members. Um, and they're, they're killing it, bro. Like um, at this point, we're maybe like seven, eight weeks in it, and I'm confident enough to just take their place blindly. I'm not even charting stuff up at this point because they're really going crazy right now. They're putting the time in. That's awesome. So that's your diamond. That's your mm -hmm. top tier. If somebody wants to get involved, they might not have the the money to put in that membership. What are the other options if they want to start? If they want to just get their feet wet, step in the door a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we have a number of different options open. You know, there's a bunch of different prices for it. Like I said, the goal is to make this accessible for everyone. So we start off with a basic membership plan. That's where you're getting the alerts. You're in the trading uh, chat, the, uh, what is that? The Trader's Corner chat. Um, so that runs $85 a month. And then we have a premium subscription right above that where you're like, okay, I wanna start getting into this a little more. The premium subscription, you'll have access to all the alerts, all the chats. And then we also have um, voice chats where we do live trading sessions sometimes, as well as you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Uh, three or four courses a month right there. Um, so that's the next one that's sitting at 150 a month. So if you're, if somebody's watching this right now and they're like, okay, I get what you're doing, but I don't really feel like motivated to get, to get into it, or I don't feel confident about it. What would you tell people watching right now that are like on the edge, like, yo, you got to get into this. Like there's money to be made here. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you tell those people? Yeah. I mean, you hear, you know, your basic Forex people are going to be like, if your mom's still working, like you should be grinding, you should be doing this. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. You know, I'm not going to be a, a fake guru. I try to keep it real with my diamonds all the time. I want to live a lifestyle where I can do whatever I want. I want to have the freedom to do whatever I want. And so it's not as much about the money as much as I can wake up tomorrow morning. I can sleep in tomorrow morning. You know, I don't have a boss to report to and I could go on vacation next week. I can do what I want. I can get stuff for my little sister. I can make, you know, buy tickets for my dad's favorite team or go do something nice for my mom. That's what I really enjoy about it. Um, and so a lot of the time, 
even I'll wake up again, being completely honest, I'll wake up be like, you know what? I don't want to do this shit today, bro. Like, let me just go back to bed. But you start thinking about the people around you, right? And that's the whole thing for me. My motivation doesn't come from inside because if it was all about me, I'd probably sleep in like three out of five days of the week, right? So I start thinking about my mom, my dad, um, my little sister, stuff like that. And just how much easier I can make life for them if I go hard and push my stuff right now. So I feel like I kind of owe that, especially to your parents that, um, you know, do all that stuff for you as you're growing up. And that's an awesome sense of motivation, having that family to to really drive you forward like you're not just doing this for yourself you're doing this for the people around you yeah. and i think that's a big concept for everybody watching if you're in high school right now if you're in grade school if you're about to grade, if you're maybe your first two years of college this is the time in your life where if you have a drive if you have a hustle if you want to start a business this is where people start differentiating between be working for the boss and becoming the boss and as you've seen here bo has become the boss i am the boss of our own companies we're doing our own things on the daily because we're not working for somebody we're out here for ourselves we're grinding every fucking day on our hustle on our shit with a mission with a goal and we're going to get that shit if you're going to sit there and watch this and really not take anything from that and, and and really not want to propel yourself forward and okay i'm just going to fall into the system i'm going to go get a job you're really not going to make it anywhere other than your your wages, your salary. So if you want to elevate your life, if you want to elevate everything around you, if you want to be riding around in a nice car, if you want to be set at 30 years old, you got to get that shit now. You got to go out and hustle. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship, one of my favorite quotes that I've ever read, entrepreneurship is spending a couple of years of your life like others won't so you can live the rest of your life like others will never. And that that hits me hard because it's like, I'm missing time going out with my friends, going to the bars, partying, and all that shit. I'm missing all that stuff right now, the fun memories. Right. But I'm spending that time going to collect my dividends, building my network, mm -hmm. really investing that into myself. And in four or five years from now, when people are working in their regular jobs, they're hating that they're slaving, waking up every day for the boss, I'm going to be out in the Caribbean chilling, and, and I'm going to be with Bo. We're going to be sipping pina coladas because we just hit big on SPY. You know right, what I mean? Right. So it's like you really got to take that and go with it. Yeah. So I, I want to transition this a little bit more into like everything's going well right now. Yeah. You've got 500 members. Everything's cool. Mm -hmm. But every business has their failures. And I want to talk about maybe maybe not major failures, but what have been some of the roadblocks in Stoic trying to build, trying to grow your business? What have been some of the setbacks or the obstacles that you've had to deal with and how did you get over those? Yeah, I think the first thing is uh, the concept of risk, right? So like you said, starting your own business, a risk right there, you know, investing, a risk right there. And when you start to think about the concept of risk, you know, you're taking something on that's not guaranteed, right? You may lose something out of this. And to build off your point a little bit where you were talking about, you know, going out and getting a job, there's always some type of risk involved in what you're doing, right? In a job, you're risking your time for money, right? You're trading your time for money with a boss that could fire you tomorrow. In the market, you know, I'm not trading my time for money. I'm trading my money for money. I'm putting my money on the line. Um, I think, you know, the other risk that you had talked about where, you know, go ahead and get that. I think my biggest regret and it's not really a roadblock because it's not something I can go back and fix or something I encountered. But my biggest regret was not starting this earlier, right? So I'm thinking to myself about all of the people that I was friends with that started their brand in college. College, high school are the biggest networking opportunities that you have as a young person, by far. I wish I would have had the, the confidence or you know the wherewithal to go ahead and start that in college because I can only imagine where it would be. Um, as far as roadblocks right now, I think it's a little bit of a confidence booster. It's like a double-edged sword, but by far the biggest roadblock I've had is, you know, people coming in and trying to make it their own thing. So, you know, everybody has a Discord nowadays. There's probably like 10,000 groups out there. Um, you know, I pride myself on being somebody that actually wants to teach you, right? That wants to make you a self-sufficient trader. I always say, you know, God forbid I drop dead tomorrow. How have I helped you, right? Are you still going to be able to make money in the market if I'm not here anymore? Um, and so there's been a lot of, you know, encounters where people come in, they're like, Hey, I want to learn this. I want to do this. And then, you know, you see two, three weeks later, they've started their own thing. You know, they're trying to bring members on. Um, so I think, I think the biggest, um, you know, obstacle that I face is trying to create constant improvement because I think Gary Vee was the one that said it, you know, his dad was like, Hey, all these people are copying your ideas. Like, why are you sharing all your information? You need to keep some secrets to yourself. He was like, dad, you know, they can't steal my brain. They right. can't steal my brain. So as long as I'm constantly improving, as long as I'm constantly finding new ways to teach people, new ways to make money in the market, I'm not really worried about giving out everything I know, right? So that's why I pride myself on the diamond mentorship is I'm telling you, 
every single thing that I know. There's nothing held back, which is exactly why I'm confident to take all my mentees plays without even looking at it at this point, because I know they're looking at exactly what I'm looking at. And, you know, if some people try and get you for that or some people try and run off with your idea for that. I don't take that as an insult. I take it as a compliment. You know, I'm doing something well here, but it also pushes me to keep going. So I never get complacent in what I'm doing. I always have to come up with a new way to make what I'm doing better. And that's awesome. And I can see that it being an issue, like dudes coming in and learning it and running off yeah. and starting their own group. Yeah. But it's like, you're their father at that point. Like you taught them what the fuck they know. It's not like they're doing some shit different. Like you're always going to be on the top of that because you've already been doing that. And mm -hmm. as you love to constantly improve, you're ultimately going to have the best group mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, opposed to your mentors if they want to run off and start something. But that's cool. I mean, you've really given them the, the ability. And if they are doing that, that really goes to prove that what you're doing is teaching them how to do it. And they've right. seen how to make their own money now. Right. So it's really a transparent situation where it's like, like you said, you're not holding anything back. A lot of these dudes have hidden information they don't want you to know because they want to feel like, you know, they know more than you. But you really care about being transparent and being 100% with your members because you want them to make the money that you're making. And I totally fuck with that. And I'm, we're dropping all the info in the in the bio how you can join stoic i'm gonna drop his handles you can go check out his social media page and really really see if that's something you want to do but i'm telling you i'm getting involved once i start making bread i'm gonna be posting about it there's really money to be made if you're gonna be a disciplined person and really sit down and get that shit you gotta be up for the market every morning right yes. i mean you gotta be yes. up 9 a.m 8 a.m ready to run that shit yeah and, it, and it's a constant thing i mean it's with anything it's all about the consistency you can go on and trade for a day in the week and, and make maybe $100. That's cool. But how is that really changing your life if you're not willing to do it the other four days of the week? Like, you got to be at that shit. If I'm selling shoes and I'm only selling on Monday and Friday, yeah, sure, I'm making a couple sales. But am I really pushing my potential of growth? I mean, time is money. Time is the biggest resource we have, mm -hmm. whether people realize it or not. And if you're going to spend that sitting down or going out and getting drunk in a club or doing this other bullshit, how are you improving your life and your situation? So I really think it's important that people got to understand that they got to go get that shit because we're, we're a different breed. We're go-getters. Like at right. this point, we got that mindset. We're out here for ourselves. Right. And if you can adopt that mindset and really get into the swing of things, your life is going to be so much easier. Like, yeah, you're going to have to go through some bullshit. I'm sure you're stressed out about handling 500 members and, you know, if they fail, sure. it's on you. For but sure. you're confident in what you're doing and you know everything's working out because you know what you're doing at the end of the day. Right. And that's the biggest thing. And I really fuck with I, I really fuck with you and your group for that because that's that's awesome. So be sure to check his shit out. But it, okay, so if you had to give anybody some advice on here, if they're watching, maybe they're another business owner, maybe they're not interested in getting into the stock market, they're just here for some business knowledge, for some motivation. What would you tell business owners? You know how to keep pushing their brand forward, whether they're selling cookies in bakery or whether they got a flower shop or whether they're running a service business. Like from that entrepreneur mindset. What gets you going other than family in the day? How, how, how can you give advice to somebody to keep running their shit up? Mm -hmm. So I think there's two things, right? The first thing is vision. You have to see what you want before anyone else does. And it's so corny. My coaches would say it. Everybody you know would say it. But you really have to envision what you see and believe in that before anybody else ever will. If you're talking to somebody about what you do and you don't have confidence in it, they're going to see right through you every single time. You're the only person that's tricking yourself into believing that, you know, you actually believe in what you're doing. Word. So, you know, it's real weird, but like I'll meditate a lot now just to keep my mind calm. You know, uh, before the market, I'll do like 15 minutes every day. So you're learning how to like train your thoughts, how to, you know, selectively pick the thoughts that come through your head. OK, I'm not going to think on this. I'm not going to focus on this. And that builds your confidence. Right. I'm waking up. I'm envisioning stuff, whether it's, you know. The corny stuff like looking at pictures of Lambos, you know, on your phone or something, or like you got a picture of your, you know, your dream vacation. Just envision that. Envision yourself there, even on the days it's difficult to, right? Even the days where it's difficult to get out of bed. That's, you know, the thing that's gonna get me out of bed. I got, you see, notes on my ceiling right there, <laughs> right now. Right? Like, so when I open my eyes in the morning, the first thing I look at is all the reasons why I'm getting out of bed, right? That's Everything awesome. to make sure my mind's right. Um, the second thing I would say, if you're really trying to push your brand, is there is no expense that's too heavy for marketing for exposure right and so that expense you know in the shoe game it might be hey you know i'm gonna sell you nine pairs of shoes i'm gonna give you three for free you know to somebody that has a, a massive brand or massive following yeah. you know for me it might be like hey i'm gonna give you half off to you know hop in here or 100 percent off to hop in here so that you can build the brand for me there is nothing more valuable than what you're doing to bring exposure to your company and what you're doing in terms of marketing 
So don't ever think, you know, I'm spending too much or I'm giving somebody too much of a deal or I'm hooking them up too much, especially if they have potential to grow your brand for you. Whether that is, you know, a person, whether that's a business, whether that's an advertisement, that should be the number one focus, especially in this day and age. You know, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Instagram, whether it's being out there in real life and giving out free samples, you need to find a way to get people interested in what you're doing before they pay for it. And I think that's that 100% facts. I mean, marketing is something I feel businesses lack on. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if you got solid marketing, you're going to blow your business up. Like mm -hmm. I've seen people on TikTok, they go on like DHgate and they find some shitty little toys or something and they get them in. And then they show, oh, look at how much fun I'm having with this toy. Look at what this cool, look at how it lights up. And they really start like five figure businesses just from a blown up TikTok. Like you can Crazy. really get that shit with a couple videos and the right exposure. So yeah. always hunt for that marketing. I love that. And another thing with the vision, that's beautiful. I mean, manifestation is the biggest thing. You got to know what you want and then you got to take the steps to get there. So w what do you see yourself doing in five, 10 years? What is your big goal? Like, mm -hmm. like where do you want to be in 10 years from now? Yeah, so the backstory on the Diamond Program actually um, comes up right here. My big goal for five, 10 years is to start my own hedge, right? I gotta go through my licensing. Uh, you know, I have the finance background, so I'm, I'm there with it, but I wanna get my licensing. I wanna start my own hedge fund so I can trade for, you know, some of my pals and, you know, hopefully some more uh, clients that come in. With that in mind, you know, once I'm at that stage, still kind of dies, like I won't be able to do a lot of the things I'm doing anymore. So the whole Diamond Program is meant to, you know, kind of grow the next group of stoic leaders, analysts, people that are calling out the plays. Um, again, another reason why I'm giving everything I know, because like, you know, your business is your baby, right? right you you got to right. protect the reputation <laughs> of that above everything. Uh -huh. So I want to give those people literally everything. Here's the playbook. You know what I mean? No matter how long it takes, you're locked in. You need to know this, 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 and this. So that even when I'm gone, you know, and hopefully starting my own hedge, working on my own fund, um, you know, we still have people in Stoic, still are able to help the everyday person learn how to trade, still are sending out great alerts and still are making money in there. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I know you had mentioned uh, the nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. Like setting up something where you're able to give back to the community. Right. And I love that so much because as many of you may or may not know, I really restarted. I really started reselling from being bullied and being down bad in grade school, like feeling left out for not having that shit. And that's when I decided in grade school, I'm going to go get that shit for myself. So if you're sitting there right now in grade school, you can do that shit. You can be exactly where Bo and I are at right now mm -hmm. if you put the time and working every day. And it's not like you're going to know exactly, okay, yep, I'm going to I'm gonna be the leader of an investment group uh, by this age and I'm going to have this going. You don't necessarily know exactly what's going to be, but you got to just go and take the opportunities that are given to you and really find your path. So I really started reselling and, and, and I held a charity event as I was talking with you about couple months ago in August, gave away 87, 86 pairs away to University Hospital to kids going back to school. And that really brought my story full circle because it's like, I know the feeling of being in grade school and not having cool shit and feeling left out and feeling, you know, I was getting picked on because I didn't have the coolest shoes. And that's ridiculous. But at the end of the day, my business model is set in the fact that I want to bring that back to my community. Like your community is who is supporting you ultimately. Awesome. And when you can bring that back to your city, that's just a whole different feeling. So maybe explain a little bit about like what you plan to do or how you would like to give back to the community. Cause I know that's something you were talking about. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think that's awesome. For sure. Yeah. So actually when I went into college, I started off like my first semester, my first two <laughs> semesters as a business major about halfway through, I switched to another degree that kind of has to do with business. It's called human development and community engagement. So it's, um, it's a mix of, you know, entrepreneurship with a little bit of psych, a little bit of uh, human development. And that was with the intention to, you know, start my own nonprofit. I realized probably about halfway through my sophomore year uh, that you need money to start a nonprofit. So <laughs> I started working on some other things, you know, we got Stoic going, but that is the goal, right? The entire basis of Stoic, you know, the motto for the trader and all of us is based on the fact that, you know, the only difference between the dude over here that's not making any money and is saying, you know, I'm too scared to do that. I'm going to lose money. I'd rather just go to my job. And the dude that's making $200,000 a day is the access to information. Luckily, I'm in a position where, you know, I'm kind of dibbling back and forth in both worlds. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm in a position where it, it would be wrong of me to not help others out. You know what I mean? I see my buddies, uh, you know, that come from a different background than other friends. And there's no difference in the intelligence. There's no difference in how smart they are, how motivated they are. It's literally just the access to the information. 
So if I can get you that information, if I can put you in the same position as somebody else, if I can, you know, put you a step up, put you in a position to win, I feel like I'm doing the right thing, right? When I see my people winning, when I see, you know, our members winning or our diamond members calling out their own plays and sending them to, you know, the rest of the group and hitting 100, 200, 300%, that means more to me than when I make money. I mean, I'm going to figure out a way to make money, right? But when you see other people actually benefiting from something that, you know, you've put your heart into where you're trying to help them and you see, you know, how excited they get and there's, you know, you see the messages in the group chat where they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Like, I never thought, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's honestly the most rewarding feeling in the world. Even if I don't make any money that day, like if I see you doing that, it's, it's a good day for me. And that's awesome. I love that because you just want everybody winning again. And that, right. that to fill your heart with that because you put them onto that is it, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, you're making, you're making 500 people. You're giving the opportunity to 500 plus people right now to make bread off the knowledge, you know, and that's just crazy. Right. That's crazy. And I think that's, <clears throat> I think that's cool because when I think about reselling in the sense that it's a different business model, there's a, there's competition mm -hmm. where I'm from. You know what I mean? If somebody's mm -hmm. got shoes and they're trying to sell it and they, they, they don't know how to run the loop or they want to run a bot, that's competition. That's giving my competitors leverage. Yeah. But with you, the mark, anybody can make money with the market. Right. So it's like, you just have the information. You want everybody to succeed because everybody really can make money out there. Like you were saying last night, there's so much money on this planet. Everybody can make bread. Right. I don't lose any money if you're in the same play with me, right? We make more money. And you know, a little background on the market, like the more people hopping in the play at one time, <laughs> the more the play is actually going to be worth. So we're helping each other win at that point. And like I said, you know, it's, it's so great seeing people. I know we had a buddy, um, I think it's posted on the Instagram actually, where he was down bad, you know, relationship with his family, with his wife. And he sent this one heartfelt message. I remember one day I lost like, what was it, like 1500. So I was feeling, you know, kind of red on myself. Um, he was like, hey man, I just wanted to reach out, let you know, you know, how much this group means to me. He said, in the last half a year, I paid off 70,000 in debt. <laughs> oh, relationship shit. is better with my wife now. No shit. Um, you know, by the time the year's over, I'm gonna completely have paid off my mortgage. And so like seeing messages like that, you know, I'm laying in bed. You know how being your own entrepreneur is where I'm sitting in there, I'm like, I don't really take myself serious. You know, I'm running this business from my bed and my pajamas. Right, right. right. But then you see people sending <laughs> messages like that and it's like, okay, like I'm, I'm really making a difference. So I love that shit, bro. I love, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I feel the same way, like everybody looking in, like they, they think I'm like this king ping in the sneakers, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm just doing what I love. I'm doing my thing. I don't really see myself. I don't put myself on that pedestal like, yo, I'm the boss. Right. You know what I mean? I just stay right. down and do my shit. But it's awesome when people give you that recognition and, 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 and in your sense, give you that that review of like yo you really changed my life bro right. because i know some resellers out there that have even approached me they're like yo four four kicks like you really got me into the sneaker game bro like i've been watching your shit like I i'm trying to get like you and that inspires the fuck out of me because i'm not even i'm not mentoring them right i'm just being my own dude and not here doing my thing and that's inspiring kids to get on their grind mm -hmm. so that's all i want this podcast and my brand to be about like anybody can go out there and get their fucking bread mm -hmm. you just gotta go out and get that shit Yes, sir. You gotta let them know, yes, man. Sir. You got you gotta have that energy. If you got that drive, you got a passion, you got an idea, just go after it. Mm -hmm. Your own like I said, I'm gonna keep to saying this till I die. You're the only person holding yourself back. Like just go out and do it. Just do it. And I think that's awesome. We're gonna transition here to a little sneaker talk right quick. But before we do that, is there anything else you'd like to let the people know about Stoic? Is there any last words you'd like to let them know yeah i think you know just the biggest thing right i'm here for you i want to help you i mean you know like like we talked about it could be a situation where you know i'm done with my day at 9 35 but i really want to see people succeed so you know if it's something you're interested in hop on a call with me you know we'll do it for free um we're definitely gonna get a coupon code somewhere in here yeah yeah we're okay so that, uh, all, you get a big discount on you know <laughs> signing up but um i'm really really excited you know to see all on the other side with that that's awesome. That's awesome. So quick little sneaker talk. I know, okay. I know you're into the sneaks a little bit. A little bit. I've seen you with a few yeah, pairs. Yeah. So I like to ask people this when they come on a show. You're going on an island for the rest of your life. Okay, you're going to be excluded. You've got to bring five pairs of sneaks with you, though. Mm -hmm. What five pairs are in your rotation? I guess you could say your top five favorite pairs, but what are you bringing with you on this island? My top five favorite pairs. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a question. <laughs> Yes, um, yes. You know, it might be a little bit of high beast talk right here, but I've really actually started to like the uh, the bolts. Yeah. Off -white. Yeah, the off-white uh, forces. I like those bolts a lot. So I think they're in my rotation. Um, 
I'm a big off white dude, so I'm gonna have to switch it up here with some other things. I gotta go with some classics or something. Hey, you pull the five yeah. off white shit. I'm stepping. Yeah, I gotta go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Concord's gotta go with them, right? Yeah, gotta go. Yeah. It's classic. One of my favorite shoes ever. Um, I will always have a pair in my rotation. If you know a pair gets messed up, gotta go grab a new pair. <laughs> At all times, you gotta have a pair. Um, I say, come back to the off white, the uh, the all black. The Vapor Maxes. Okay. I love them. I love the off white. They what they do clean. with the Vapor Maxes. They're fire. Um, we got to switch some other stuff in there. Prada, the Cloudburst, love them. The, the Thunders. Okay. Those, I love them. I love them. I love them. I got a pair in all of, but I really wish I would have gotten the uh, the black and white pair. Because yeah. those, are, those are absolutely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> those are fire. Um, fifth pair. Fifth pair. We got to go with the classic here. Gotta go with the classic here. Gotta be. Okay. Let me think about <laughs> it. I'll probably go. I'll probably go with the shattered backboard. The ones. The ones. Yeah. yeah fuck with gotta those. throw some ones in there. Those are beautiful. The 1.0s are going for crazy right now. I have to. Those are beautiful. Those are beautiful. Well, we're going to wrap this up, okay? You heard about Bo's chat. You heard about his story. You heard about his business model. Again, we're going to link everything in the bio below. Thanks for tuning in and watching this all the way through. Please leave a like and subscribe if you fucked with this. We got seven more episodes coming in this season, okay? Just stay tuned with us. Thank you, Bo, again for coming on and rocking with us. And go get that shit! Yes, sir. Go get it! Talk to you. Four for a while. <laughs> Ay. I'm too sexy for that drip, too sexy for the kicks, Ay. that little bit on my dick, she bout to ride it stick, I'm riding through the whip, Ay. I'm switching cars and shit, I'm about to do the dash, I'm chasing all that cash. Bo too sexy for that what? Mm. Too sexy for that drip. Mm. Ay. Flexing for the whip, I uh. just fucked your bitch with my tip, I'ma mm. pull up with whole click, pull mm. dope coops and shit. I don't mm. give a fuck about the cash. I'ma go grab on the ass. Roll the dope, smoking green, smoking green with a team on the beam. Yeah, and we on the mezzanine, sipping lean out of double cup. You know, we get that shit up. Wait a minute, switch it up. Switch the flow, how it go, Mario, skirting fast. Get the cash, get the cash, going out, spend it fast. Pull up with the tool, hunting some deer. Yeah, I'm going all year. Hey. Uh, go out in the field, when I'm hunting that deer, shit only take one shot. <laughs> Funny that I used that same deer rifle when I was shooting the ops. I just hit that boy in his head. That boy done lost his top. Hey. They just told me where his grandma lived. Uh-oh, we got the drop. Hey. Uh-oh, I got the walk. Uh-oh, my chain and pop. Hey. Uh-oh, the white on shoes. But the white is off. Hey. Uh. Pop out with your shoddy. She looking real naughty. She real looking look. Hey. Real thotty, wait a minute, I'ma bend her body in the Maserati, then we gon' swerve, then we gon' curve. Yeah, I'm staying in my lane, she giving me that brain, she is sane, not insane. I don't give a fuck about that brain, mm. I just want that ass, and I'ma crack it like a Kit Kat, mm. right that in half. I'm doing my shit, I'm going, you see me white black, when I pop, pop, pop that gas. I'ma do that shit, smoke that gas, I'ma do that shit, roll my grass up. Carry the money, the honey, the honey, the honey, the blues and green. Yeah, yeah, fuck you if you ain't with us the team, yeah. Pulling the money up. Man, I'm feeling like God. Hey, yo, what we pulling up is, B? The Benz or the Mazi? Ah. I'm gonna go get that. Then I hit him with shawty. Hey, I hit him with that gleesh. Then call that bop on the body. I'm gonna run that body. I'm gonna whip with the thotty. Hey. She suck it till she get snotty. Hey. She suck it, she get naughty. Okay. Running that shit till I'm dead. Running that shit till I got a bullet in my head. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna stack the blue and green with the same like damn. I'm dedicated to this shit. I'm medicated with this shit. Go get it. I'm getting with it with a blank. Go get it. I don't give a fuck about it. Toy dog. Go get it in a row. I will. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Bend the body in the Maserati. Bend I don't it. give a fuck about the toppy. I just want a bad man sloppy. Hey. And we up in the lobby. Hey. Making that cash on computer, making compact for the clicks. Hey. Ah, <laughs> shit. You with the shits? Hey. Boaz in the still where we get lit. We get it lit, baby. <laughs> poop, poop, poop. Baby, you know what's going on. Well, for all, check the set. Boaz on the shit. Just don't get back, miss. Get it on the mat. That bitch wanna fuck me, get your ass in. Don't you hang up on that hard ass shit.